Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Adaptations of the Hive. Now, this series is focused on which play style of Tyranids you might be interested in. So for this first episode, I'm just going to quickly go through all the different play styles available to Nids and what base units and Hive fleets are really good for that particular style of play. I'm going to start with two styles that I think are the most common, uh, most played for Tyranids, and those two styles are Nidzilla and the Gaunt Carpet. Now, Ninzilla is a term for a Tyranid list that basically has as many large monsters as possible. For these lists, there are several Hive Fleets that will work depending on what kind of monsters that you're going for. If you're looking for just as many wounds as possible, a popular list that you can run is Carnifex Spam. Now, this list normally goes with the Hive Fleet Jormungandr, which gives everything in your list cover as long as they do not advance or charge that turn. And that has been FAQ'd to say, if you complete a charge, then you lose the cover. If you fail a charge, you do not count as having charged. So that's a nice little bonus at least that if you fail your charge, you at least don't get hit twice and also lose your cover save. Um, ninth edition is a little weird in that they haven't really specified if monsters can have cover because none of the effects of cover in terms of actual terrain affect anything except infantry. However, um, I would imagine traits like the Jormungandr High Fleet trait, which gives your unit the benefit of cover, um, will give you a plus one to your save out in the open for your monsters. Uh, so anyways, you're spamming Carnifexes with this list, and unfortunately Carnifexes are now pretty expensive if you do anything but double Scything Talons, because all the guns went up in points. So if you're running four of them, that becomes pretty expensive pretty quickly, because each gun went up three points apiece. So that's an extra 12 points per Carnifex, and if you're spamming Carnifexes, that's obviously a significant point increase. Uh, so what you can do is uh, you can run Old One-Eye with three units of three Bare Bones Carnifexes, giving you a total of 10 Carnifexes on the table. They are all melee, but uh, by Bare Bones, I do mean include Sporsis because 10 points for a minus one to hit is absolutely the best thing about Carnifexes, so definitely take that. Uh, the list is pretty funny in that no one expects you to just run at them with 10 melee Carnifexes. Uh, and that's because you're going to have to expect to lose like five of them before you get into combat. Unfortunately, toughness seven and eight wounds with a three up save and no invuln is not super durable anymore. But it, if you have a lot of them, some of them are going to get there. So the problem is, even if you do get there, uh, you want to be you're going to want to be hitting really expensive targets because you have one turn to take them all out. And after your opponent has shot at your Carnifexes for two turns, you're probably going to be left with Old One-Eye and one Carnifex with probably only a few wounds left. Um, which does allow Old One-Eye to continue and get his points worth, but make sure that you have something to either deal with a screen or that the meta that you're playing in does not have screens. Otherwise, this is approximately 1,200 points that's going to do very minimal damage. However, this list is only about 1,200 points, so it leaves you with actually 835 points left over for another detachment where you can fill in that anti-horde to clear out screens or more monsters for target saturation that maybe are a little more scary than the Carnifexes and your opponent has to choose, which may make your Carnifexes live longer. Um, if you want to go peer way back in uh, the 4th edition lists, you can take a uh, patrol with a Broodlord, two units of Gene Stealers, and two Lictors, and that leaves you with a few points to spare. And that list will really bring back the nostalgia of how Tyranids played in 4th edition, but probably wasn't going to give you too many wins. Uh, Gene Stealers are unfortunately just a little too expensive for what they do anymore. But if you do want to go for it, then I would run the Carnifex Detachment as a custom Hive Fleet with Prey Sight and Hypermetabolic Acceleration, or again, run them as Jormungandr for the cover save, 
hoping that it works like that still. Uh, and then I would run the Gene Stealers as Kraken, because without Swarmlord, you're going to need that Kraken stratagem for a turn one charge. Moving on to a second idea for monster mash lists is target saturation with just nothing but T8 monsters. I actually really like this list. It's very similar to what I've been running in tournaments. Um, people are equipped to kill Marines right now, so they don't really have as much of that high strength shooting. Um, most lists run either two Dreadnoughts with four Laz Cannons each, or two units of Eradicators, and that's pretty much all their anti-tank. And or it like custodies have a their Alaris Terminators, and sisters have their Exorcists. But for the most part, you're only going to be taking five to ten high strength anti-tank shots, and nothing is really going to be above strength nine. So. I would actually recommend in this list you want to invest in both a Malanthrope and a Maliceptor for that added durability. Especially now, again, Eradicators are going to be that main anti-tank that most people are running. So this list is going to be all about T8. You have Exocrines, you have the Haraspex, you have Tyrannifexes. The Haraspex acts as melee pressure. The Tyrannifex, you want to take Acid Spray and have it a, be a good mid-range threat. Then you have the Exocrines in the back. I, I've talked about Exocrines a lot. They are just the best unit that Tyranids can take. And you have those Exocrines in the back to pummel your enemy from afar. Now, this is really going to stress out your opponent's anti-tank weaponry. Because, again, they're not going to have more than 10 anti-tank weaponry shots a turn. And if you have the Malanthrope and the Maliceptor strat, then even four Laz Cannons from a Salamander Mortis Dread who hits on twos and with four Laz Cannons and has that Salamander to reroll a hit and a wound, even with all those buffs, it only averages about seven and a half wounds done to your monsters. And Eradicators, even Salamander Erad Eradicators who have plus one to wound, uh, those six Melta shots are still only averaging 7.8 wounds to a monster, and that's just not going to be enough to take out these eight large Toughness 8 bugs that you have in your list. And they can forget about any of their Bolter equivalent, anything less really doing anything to you because they're wounding you on sixes. Anything Strength 5 or less is wounding your T8 monsters on sixes if you have that strat up. Uh, the best way I could see taking this list is in about two detachments, one of them being a Chrono Spearhead with just Malanthrope, Maliceptor with Symbiostorm. The nice thing is the Maliceptor affects friendlies, so he gives his bonus to all Tyranid units regardless of their high fleet. But you really want Symbiostorm, so keep the Maliceptor in the Chronos detachment. So you have a Chrono Spearhead of Malanthrope, Maliceptor with Symbiostorm, a single Lictor just to grab objectives, and then three Exocrine. Follow that up with a Patrol Detachment that has a second Malanthrope, three Bare Bones Warriors, again, just to fill out the troop choice and grab objectives, and then two Haraspex, both of them with the Murderous Size Adaptive Physiology, and then take two more Tyrannifex with Acid Spray. This gives you eight monstrous creatures that are all T8, and just very hard to remove. And I would make that patrol detachment either Leviathan, so they have a six up feel no pain, or even go with a custom hive fleet and take the uh, turn one six up feel no pain trait, which is like biosphere consumption, something like that. Um, I Sorry, I don't actually know the custom hive fleet names quite as well, but it's a turn one, six up, feel no pain, and then you take Prey Sight, so your monsters get plus one to hit if they charge or are charged, which will give your Haraspexes hitting on threes, which makes them very deadly. The So that's the other Monster Mash list. I actually really like that one. Uh, I think it could actually see do pretty well in this current meta. Uh, but if your Monster Mash is not for you, the other 
main play style you can have is the exact opposite of these monster mash lists. This one is called the Gaunt Carpet, and it basically involves a massive horde that really takes that Tyranid Codex reference of we have more bodies than you have bullets. Sadly, we can't take a truly unending swarm, which I feel like would be around a thousand gaunts. Uh, Games Workshop just does not do points that way. You can really only fit about 200 models in your deployment zones anyways, even on the larger maps. So a you have a truly unending, you can't have that truly unending swarm, but especially now that ninth edition gave that point increase per body, this gets very expensive very quickly if you are thinking of spamming almost 200 bodies. And I think if you really want to go crazy, you take around 240 Gaunts, which is eight large units of 30. And you would want to run these in either Leviathan for that six up feel no pain, Jormungandr, again, to give them cover. So they'll have a five up save or take a custom hive fleet with that six up invuln for Gaunts and pack hunters, which allows you to reroll or gives you an extra AP if you outnumber your opponent. Uh, alternatively, you could make everything Kraken, which allows you to fall back and still charge, which with 240 bodies just constantly falling back, charging, tying things up, uh, could be very solid. The idea of this list is really simple. It's all about board control. Just like how Tau armies play only in the shooting phase, this list only plays in one phase, and that is the movement phase. You don't even really scratch your opponent's army. You simply overwhelm the board with just too many bodies to get through. This list absolutely wants Malanthropes in it, and I would even take three of them just to keep all of your bugs more annoying to kill. Uh, powers like Catalyst would be nice to have, but honestly, your opponent's just going to target the five other units next to the one unit that you put Catalyst on. So I think you don't even need a, a Psyker in this list. And I would take a battalion and a patrol and probably make them both the same hive fleet so they're all getting the same buff because they're all the same models anyways. And I would include Myotic Spores in this list to try and keep your opponent in their deployment zone as long as possible so the Myotic Spores can keep them in there even if they get first turn. And I'd actually even do the Spore Field stratagem, keep a few points behind, and between all those spore mines, the Myotic Spores infiltrate to keep your opponent in their deployment zone. And then you use the Spore Field Stratagem to kind of fill in those gaps that this, the Myotic Spores left behind. And you can literally just have a wall across the entire front of the board, nine or 12 inches away from your opponent's deployment zone and make sure that they can't come out too far. So how that works, uh, I made a list that includes 86 Hormagons. I needed a few extra points. So you have two units of 30, one unit of 26, and then 150 Termagants. You have five units of 30 there. And then you include three units of three Myotic Spores just to, again, infiltrate up on the front of the board alongside three Malanthropes. Uh, just one, make sure each one is basically covering three Gaunt Squads. And that leaves you with 150 points left over for either the Spore Field strat if your opponent is going first, or the Endless Swarm stratagem if you think that's going to be more useful and you can bring back a whole 30 unit of Termagants once one is destroyed. So with this list, you don't even charge your opponent unless it's to get on an objective because you want your opponent to be have as few opportunities to remove models as possible. So don't let them overwatch you. Don't let them punch you in your turn. You're always gonna fall back. You're always just running right up in front of your opponent and blocking their movement and basically just trying to keep them locked in their deployment zone the entire course of the game. You're likely to be tabled just about every game, but it's gonna take your opponent four or five turns to do it. And your opponent will only have probably one or two turns of scoring any primary points outside of their deployment zone. They only score points with on secondaries with the Thin Their Ranks objective, and you prevent them from getting really anything else. So 
they they can't take any other killing objectives. They only have tiny little gons to kill and maybe three malice scepters, which at most gets them nine points if they take assassinate. And those guys are going to be very difficult for them to get to uh, through those two hundred and forty gons. So they don't really have any secondaries. If you're holding them in their deployment zone, they're not doing any of those board control secondaries. They're getting almost zero points there, maybe six uh, by the end of the game if they've completely killed you off. So between that and you only giving them their single objective in their deployment zone and maybe a turn of more objectives, they're only going to get something like 25 points on their primary whereas you should be getting that 45 or at least 40 of that 45 with this list and then if you take engage on all fronts or you take um raise the banners those are the two secondaries that you take here as well as the mission secondaries are always going to be very good for this list and basically you just sit on objectives and you just score points you don't even really interact with your opponent's army at all. And you should have 40 or 45 points on the primary compared to your opponent's 25. And then you should have probably eight from raised banners and eight from engage on all fronts. And those are low scoring points for those objectives. But if you have those two, that's suddenly putting you at 60 something points where your opponent's only gonna have 25 for their primary and 15 for their secondary and maybe another 12 combined with their other two secondaries and you're suddenly winning the game 55 or 60 to 50 something points so it's going to be a very low scoring game but you're going to win which is all you really need to do especially with tyranids a win is absolutely a win i think that this is actually a very viable list. It got a huge buff in ninth edition because killing is no longer half the points of the primary mission anymore. And the game has been shortened a turn. So your opponent only has four turns of scoring that primary mission now. And if you turn off three of them, it is a massive blow to your opponent's points. So those are the main two styles um, that, pe that you see commonly played for Tyranids. And most lists have a mixing of both, just kind of hard leaning towards one side rather than the other. Uh, however, I think if you really do go all in on one of those two styles, it can actually be a very effective list just by overwhelming your opponent's ability to deal with one type and essentially rendering the other type of weaponry, either their anti-horde weaponry is useless against your T8 list, or their anti-tank weaponry is useless against the gaunt carpet. So if you really hard shift into one of those positions, you're just basically rendering half of an opponent's army completely useless. And that can be a very effective way to win an event. Anyways, I think that is enough for this video. I am going to continue this series with a few more of the more obscure styles that Tyranids can play, and then follow through on that by having several videos that specialize in each one of the individual hive fleets, uh, their warlord traits, their relics, and what units each of them can take and what units those really go well with. So thank you all very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks.